Hi, my name is Anne McElhenney. And I'm Phelan McAleer. And welcome to the Anne and Phelan Scoop. Yes, big news about the Hunter Biden movie, My Son Hunter, that you funded, that you crowdfunded. Guess who we're partnering with? We'll be able to bring you all the news, when it's coming out, where you'll see it, all that. And we're going to show you a teaser clip and the poster. We can hardly contain ourselves with yes. excitement. Exactly. And we interviewed Joe Biden. Yeah. Joe, Bi- Joe Biden? Where yeah, Joe we're going to interview Joe Biden. Well, okay. Is he, on, is, he, is he okay to be interviewed? I mean, we're ac- well, actually, a.k.a. John James, who's playing Joe Biden in the Hunter Biden movie. So we're very excited to bring you that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and we owe you an apology. Huge apology. Huge. Huge. We told you Europe was facing blackouts this winter because of green madness that involved closing fossil fuel power plants and they're refusing to frack, leaving Russia with the power of life and death. We told you that was going to happen this winter. We were wrong. Uh, it's not happening this winter. It's already happening now. We bring you the full, awful, deadly details. And it's an ill wind that doesn't bring somebody some good. So um, you see, we did the ill wind. You know. Oh no! You see that? Oh, look at us! Look at when, us with the clever! Was, look at us was. with the clever segues with renewables. Yes, but it's an ill wind that doesn't bring some good. So gas prices, natural gas prices in the United States are at a record high. Yes, at a fourteen-year record high. And with, and oil companies are doing well, and uh, Saudi Arabia is doing well. So well done, Greenies. But then we'll have more on that, and we have a California. California love story that shows what women really want and it's not the cool liberal guy bizarrely Apparently. but we're going to start with obviously you've probably heard all the extraordinary news that's broken in the mm. last few days that we the movie is coming out on September the 7th and we are partnering with Breitbart which is Breitbart News Network which is really fabulous for us when it's we a think kind of about a circle because we, it, came... It, we came here because of Andrew Breitbart we're living in Los Angeles because of our dear dear friend Andrew Breitbart and the idea that this movie is now going to come out on the Breitbart Network this is basically a huge step for Breitbart they're getting into the movie distribution business and it's exactly what Andrew talked about all the time he talked about politics being downstream of culture and that we had to be involved in the culture wars that we had to be creating art yes and it's there's something very special and gorgeous about, about about the fact that we're able to do yeah. this, um, and it's it, it it just feels exactly as Philip said. It feels like we've come full circle. Yeah, talking of art, let's have a look at the teaser uh, for my son Hunter. The boy. And we also can show you quite, uh, we're excited to show you, here's what the poster looks like, which yes. we think is just absolutely fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a good look at that poster. Um, and by the and just, we're just, we're very excited. You probably can hear it in our voices. And obviously, you know, it's, everything's, it's, everything's happening in a, in a really good way. Um, and we're going to go over right now, actually, to talk to John James. Or Joe Biden. Or Joe Biden. Um, Actor bon vivant, as I say, uh, uh, he, you know, John James, who's playing, Joe Biden in My Son Hunter, we recorded just before we came on air. Let's go over there. And now we talk to John James, actor, Bon, B- bon Vivant. Um, uh, A.K.A. Joe Biden. Um, you probably, you may know him as uh, Jeff Colby from Dynasty, or is it Dynasty? Dynasty, according to the Americans, but we all called it Dynasty. You may know him as Jeff Colby, but I predict going forward, he'll be known as Joe Biden from My Son Hunter. Hi guys, hi Ann, hi Phelan. Good to see you again. I miss I miss our little posse of rebels. Exactly. We we miss our evenings in Belgrade together. Yeah, in Serbia, as Hillary Clinton would say, dodging uh, bombs and gunfire in Serbia. That was us. That was yes, us. Yes. Exactly. So how are you? Are you? How are you feeling about the about the release of the film now? Well, I was going to ask you. I mean, this is sort of. This is unprecedented. I mean, this is the wave of the future. And when I heard it was Breitbart, I went, holy cow. Yeah, uh, they have 15 million plus page views a month, which is puts them in the top 10 of all news sites around the world. And I this it can go three ways. It could be we bomb, we do okay, or it will be a smash. And I'm tending to lean toward the the last one because... No, I mean, it's going to be... Of course, it's going to be a complete smash. I mean, the reach and, and, the, and the movie, it's just... A, I mean, and everyone knows Hunter Biden... Is- you know, what's interesting too, Phil, is that one thing Hollywood listens to more than anything is money. And no, they do. And I'll tell you, if they see some numbers coming in that are 
outstanding. I mean, just I did some simple math, and if we get a very small percentage of their audience, some of our actors' audiences, uh, it's going to be it's going to be quite interesting. Of course. Uh, so let, let me let me take you back, John. Let me take you back to to the beginning, right? Actually, we should take our audience back to the very beginning. Most people uh, know you as Jeff Colby from from Dynasty. We're putting up some photographs there to remind from people. From the good old days. From the good old days. Can I just, can I interrupt by, by saying that I continue, for, the, for as long as I live, John, I'll always think of you as, you know, you have to remember that you were so big back in the day. Like, I was from a small town in the west of Ireland, lusting after you. And, and, and only a teenage girl I was. And looking at you, all so handsome in that show that was so glamorous, that was so beautiful. And, and that's the effect you had all over the world. Millions and millions of people. Everybody knows who Jeff Colby was. Well, you know, it's crazy. I mean, when we were in Serbia, in Belgrade, I mean, when I showed up at the Metropole Hotel, it was like I was, I mean, Nico, the manager, met me. And I arrived in my room, and there were two chambermaids standing there at attention. That's right. That's well, right. Actually, that's right. The whole the whole staff lined up for John. For John James, not for me, no. not for the producer, not for Anne, not the producer, no, no, not no. for Robert who, Davy, who, Lauren, who Lauren, Lauren Fox. Was, John was, James. John James got a. It was like it was like the Queen had arrived and inspecting the. It was the hysterical. Crew. It was no, so. Actually, good. by the way, the, the, the even the better story than that is that we were waiting for you, and you were being brought in. The, the car had gone to the airport to pick you up. And Phil and I were sitting in the foyer of the hotel in Belgrade, waiting to see to, for you to meet you. And and the next thing, we could see the manager pacing back and forth frantically. And we said to him, you know, I, I, is everything okay? And he went, John James is coming. John James is coming to our hotel. And I'm like, yeah, we, you know, and but he was so excited. And by the way, and it's so true. And, and as I said, all the staff were out. So, so, we so were, yeah. It's, it was an amazing experience. So, John, how did you feel about uh, playing, about the idea of playing Joe Biden? Well, you remember, Phil. I mean, you called me and uh, I said, oh, OK, what do you have in mind? He said, and, uh, you said, well, the name of the picture is my son, Hunter. I'd like you to play Joe Biden. <laughs> uh, what did I say, Phil? I said, I need to think about this. Let me read yes. the script. Let me think about it. Before reading the script, um, I thought, I don't know if I want to do this. I mean, you know me, Anne. I, I get nervous if I don't have anything to get nervous about. Yes, so yes. <laughs> one of those kind of people, like, always worrying, and Davi knows that. <clears throat> but anyhow, I read the script. I sat down, closed all the doors. I said, okay, let's read this on Sunday afternoon. I called you the next day, didn't I? Yes. I said, Jesus, this is good. This is really good. This has got so many different levels. I laughed out loud. How many times do you read a script where you laugh out loud? Yes. How many times do you walk away feeling empathy, feeling, God, what a story. And you know what's interesting? And I've said this to you before. And it's part of the approach I, taught, I took with Joe. I did some research on him. You know, the fact that he was 31 when he was the youngest senator. And he was touted as the next John Kennedy. Uh, they were looking at him as presidential material and then of course that terrible car accident where his wife who was his campaign manager by the way who got him into the mm -hmm. senate mm -hmm. <clears throat> daughter died and both Bo, hunter's brother and hunter were injured pretty seriously in the car accident so i did the research on it and i said to myself if it wasn't joe biden this would be a fantastic story mm -hmm. aside from that it really would. This is a incredible story. And there are so many, I don't want to, I'd love to, you know, I mean, it's in, I th well, you know, I just want to make you proud, Dad. That wonderful line. I mean, there were times during that scene, I had trouble keeping it together yeah. with Lawrence. Yeah. Because. L just to put it in, Lawrence is playing Hunter Biden. In Lawrence Fox. Lawrence Fox, the British actor. It's this dynamic of, you know, <clears throat> family comes first. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm proud, you know, you're the smartest man I know. And, and it makes the audience and me, the reader, think of the dynamics of what's going on here um, between these two people. 
and it, it's 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 got so many wonderful levels. I don't know if you saw Lawrence and Mr. Dobby on Lawrence's show. Did you watch that yet? Yes. yes, yes, yes. And I did like. I mean, how do you describe this movie? I'm sure that people will be asking you. Lawrence said a gangster comedy, but it isn't. It's more than a comedy. It is not a comedy. There are funny moments, but it's very rich and deep. And uh, mm. I'm very proud and beautiful. of beautiful. And also very beautiful to look at. I oh. mean, Davi did such a beautiful job on the cinematography. Oh. It's really gorgeous. Well, I, I'd like everyone to remember, I was at Davi's shoulder for most of the directing. <laughs> <you know. laughs> I hope so, Robert, I hope yeah. Robert sees this. Yeah, I'll be getting I'll be getting angry texts that's from right, him. That's right. That's right. But you know what we did in what was it four and a half five weeks is remarkable. I mean, yes. Yeah. I'm yes. I'm not going. I'm gonna I am gonna toot my own horn here, but. We never ran late. We the actors knew their lines. We got there. We they all gave. I mean, spectacular. I've only seen a director's cut that is six, seven months old now. So I haven't seen the finished product. But what I did see, I was. I, I just loved it. I loved it. Yeah, I mean, there's so, there's so many remarkable scenes in it, and, yes. and there's a scene in it where you playing Joe Biden and Lawrence playing Hunter Biden are in a car talking, and you know. It, I've never seen a scene or uh, cause so much stress to so many actors. Yeah. Uh, it was I mean, very intense. It was 10 pages, was it? Uh, and you want, you need to do it. More. It was actually it was, almost 16 pages. 16 oh my God. pages. In one night. And was it one night we did it in? Uh, can I, can I, can I brag a bit? We were scheduled Please. to go to one thirty. We wrapped at nine thirty. That's amazing. We're scheduled to go what, until one thirty in the morning. Wow. One thirty yeah. in the morning, and we wrapped the scene out at nine thirty. Yeah. I, I I just want people to know. I mean, yeah, I just want people to know. Like normally, um, a movie you do one or two pages a day, three pages a day. Oh, yeah. We did sixteen pages. Now it was in the back of a, a motor scene, vehicle, but still sixteen pages. It's a lot. No, it's a lot. We, we and then we you know, I love here's, here's Davi. We had a little two way. Robert Davi, our director. We had a little two-way radio sitting on the floor in the back of the black Secret Service SUV. And I'm sitting to the right and Lawrence is to the left. And we'd be going along doing the scene and all of a sudden, okay, JJ, take it back two and a half lines and just drop it a little bit on the... I'm going, okay. <laughs> Get back two and a half lines. <laughs> I'm going, oh my God, Robert. Yeah. But he, uh, I'm so blessed to yeah. have worked with Robert Davi as a director. Mm. They say there's an old saying that the best directors are old actors or mm -hmm. actors because they know how an actor thinks. They know the pitfalls they get into. And I, I tell him that I felt like an old racehorse and you were just whipping me right to that finish line. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he did. He did, and he, I think, got the best performance out of me that I've ever done. Um, he, I, he, I have to agree. I have yeah, to agree. I no, mean, I, I mean, Fabulous. you are outstanding, yeah. and I mean that. I don't mean just in a casual way. I mean, your standout performance yeah. in the movie. I mean, I suppose I've seen more of Lawrence recently. I, I, I had no doubt that Lawrence would deliver. You know, I haven't seen much of you recently. I, think, uh, I mean, I've been. Uh, I, I don't know if I've been cancelled in. Everybody forgot to tell me or not. Yeah, but but to, your performance is is outstanding. It's it's yeah. it's the it's the standout performance in many ways of, of right. it. And and I think you have a, a diff, more different role, a, a more difficult role because yes. you're playing a public figure that everyone knows how they behave, everyone knows how they sound, everyone knows what they look like. So you you're in this strange world where you have to do an impression of the person but act out a, a fictional role say fictional things that are based on facts it's it's so They're multi amazing. multi layered I mean, that only a great yeah. I mean, or a great a veteran actor like yourself could do it there are some moments in there with that scene with lawrence that you had to walk a fine line mm -hmm. you follow me as an actor mm -hmm. with the material because yes. you could fall flat on your face. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you had, you couldn't <clears throat> mug it up. It had to be honest in everything mm -hmm. I said. And as you say, and I tried not to do a caricature, he's the president of the United States. Yes. He's a sitting president. 
right now. And this movie about his life, okay, with his son. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this is you don't you don't walk lightly and take it lightly. Mm-hmm. This is serious stuff, and I that's. I think I, I think I did it. I think I did, no, you it. did it. Yeah. And we've had it and we've had people, you know, people who've seen the trailer or whatever, people who saw the teaser, people are all mentioning it and people are saying, My God, John James is fabulous. And also the transformation. How we you know, we got the hair sorted, John. We got the eyebrows sorted. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like I've never you know, I've never seen eyebrows cause as much stress in my life. But it but it um, I need to get my eyebrows down now. Get them done. I want my eyebrows done. I don't feel like Joe. Come on. I got brown eyebrows and white hair. Do it now. Yes, yes. We got, and, and, you, and it really was so extraordinary. As you said, I remember you saying in the hotel, like, you know, you'd get up in the morning and you looked at yourself and you were like going, oh, <laughs> look at me. Well, that's an actor. I mean, my wife asked me the other day, she said, when do you feel like you're in character? And I said, well, when I put on my wardrobe. Yeah. As soon as I put on my suit, you know, when I left Dynasty, this is part of our little, I, I think I told you this, you listened to the story, that when I left Dynasty, my final day in my dressing room, and I hung up my suit and shirt, and I turned at the door and made a moment of it, and I said, goodbye, Jeff Colby, oh. after 10 years, and I actually did that, because yeah. I knew that I was hanging up something that I had created that lives today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As you say, it, it lives today. And, and, and I mean, we were in Serbia. They're reshooting Dynasty in Serbia with the original scripts. Do you remember? Were you there that day? Did I introduce? Uh, no. You? Tell, tell us what happened. Tell us what happened well, because we know about this. But t- tell us what, what happened. Our, what was our production, production um, manager's name? The young lady who's so brilliant. Um, oh, Tia. Yeah. T- Tia. 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 I think yeah. Yeah. she said a friend of mine is working on dynasty and the television network in Serbia licensed every show, every script, and they're shooting it verbatim. Would you, and they were shooting at this location last week. Would you mind if the fellow young actor who plays Jeff and Fallon come out and visit? I said, are you kidding? Of course. So the next day they came out. And I told them, I said, this is, this is crazy <laughs> to meet you nearly 40 over, yeah, 40 years ago, I was standing in your shoes in the United States creating Jeff and here to meet you. It's an honor, I said, to meet you and good luck with it. And they were so jazzed, but yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's and did you get to see, did you get to see any of the show? I mean, I, I I've seen I some of it. It's not really easily available because it's on a network yet but i'm sure they're going to start streaming and talking talking of jeff colby when we were there in the hotel there was someone who was so enamored with jeff colby he drove all the way from germany to serbia just just to be with his hero jeff colby and he was and by the way it wasn't like he wasn't like a middle-aged person this was a young person Um, so your influence is unbelievable john John. we also had other guests too didn't we that's right. We, we you want to talk about the Yeah, want yeah, to- the role is so uh, it's so interesting to so people. Hunter Biden sent three spies, and then I phoned them. and uh, Yeah, John had got a telephone number, so he yeah, phoned them. I phoned them, and as I was talking to them, and they were trying to explain how innocent and they were and not, uh, how they were just filmmakers, I could hear my almost hear my own voice in the phone call. And I said, where are you guys now? And they said, we're in the cafe across the road, basically spying on, on the shoot. Uh, so I went over, and of course they had a great backstory, uh, in, and it was true. Mm-hmm. Like are all great spies, actually. Make sure most of your backstory is true; it's easier to remember. Uh, they, they, they did. The, the guy did represent South Park. He was part of the South Park team. And the people South who Park, were, and, and, the, and yeah. the guys who were with him had, in fact, made a documentary years previously. Yes. Um, hands on a hard, hands on a hard car, or something like that, something about, like that. about cars getting beaten up. And, you know, so that part of the story was actually true. Yes. So as film says, yeah, they had these little shreds of truth to the story. Well, that- it turns out that they were, that the guy, the head honcho, Kevin Morris, is Hunter Biden's lawyer. who was One le- of 30. He lawyers. was leading 30 lawyers to try and undermine all the stories, of all the truth about Hunter Biden, trying to undermine our movie, trying to spy on our movie. And he interviewed me for three hours and he interviewed Lawrence and he interviewed you. I don't know if he interviewed you. 
So yeah. he's he was out there. I assume there'll be quotes out of context now. I assume there'll be all sorts of things flying. He also uh, paid he, Hunter's tax liability. Yeah, he paid Hunter's tax liability 20, of, se- 20, of several mil- many millions of dollars. Uh, uh, it's great to be a Biden, isn't mm-hmm. it? Oh yeah, and you always fall up, fall on your feet, basically. Yeah, yes. and then you have these friends in high places who fly around the world trying to, you know. Actually, let's put up some headlines there from from the Kevin Morris adventure in Wonderland. So this is what this is this is the movie that the establishment don't want you to see. This was the story that the establishment didn't want to see you to see before the last election. This is the story big Hollywood didn't want you to see. This is the story big tech didn't want you to see. Big media. That's why we we made the movie. That's why you crowdfunded it. That's why we're partnering with Breitbart to get it out to as many millions of people as soon as possible. So go to mysonhunter.com, pre-order it now. Be there on September seventh. Watch. John James play Joe Biden. Being fabulous. Um, Where do you think you'll be on the seventh of September? Oh, I know. John? I know. Oh yeah. I'm going to be on stage at the Nico Hotel at Feinstein's. So, so John, tell us what the show uh, in San Francisco is, because we have seen it. Well, um, I've always wanted to be a Rat Pack kind of guy. I always wanted to be like Dean and. Frank and Joey Bishop and Peter Lawford and have that kind of swagger on stage. So I came up with the idea called uh, Cocktails with the Carringtons, and I engaged Jack Coleman and Gordon Thompson, who played uh, Stephen and Adam, wrote a couple of silly songs, which are quite funny, actually. Very funny. Very funny. And we, we tell some war stories, some jokes, show some photos, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So, uh, unfortunately, the night that the movie premieres, I will be on stage at Fine Scenes in San Francisco okay. that evening. But Actually, I'm sure now, explain to me, Phelan, because your audience might want to know this. You don't have to buy it on the 7th. You can buy it on the 8th, yes. right? No, yes, and you, you can buy it now. You can buy it now, uh, but you won't okay. be available <laughs> until the 7th. It's premiering on the 7th, but you can buy it on the 8th and the 9th and the 10th and buy it over the okay. next few okay. weeks. How much is it? Uh, uh, good question. It's twenty one ninety nine, I, I believe. So, yeah. Yes, one ninety nine. And when you do buy it, you can play it again. Yeah, you you're going to own it. You're you going to download it. it and own it at so that point. Go to mysonhunter.com oh. and you'll see all the all the details there. So, so we'll, <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think the Breitbart's got at least six purchases because everyone in my family, <laughs> even though they're all going to be watching it together, very good, I love very it. good. I love it. Okay, listen, John, it's been great talking to you. Uh, um, keep up the good work. and We look forward to seeing you back out here in L.A. Yes. I hope soon, John. Well, I hope, you know, we need to get together with the gang somehow. That'd be so yes, great. That'd, that'd be, be great. so great. I miss you all. We had a great time. Um, this is all very exciting. It is. It's, it's exciting. It's it very is. exciting. It is. Thanks, John. Thank no, you, John. Uh, Talk bye. to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now. Uh, you know, he he really did give an amazing performance. He really did, uh, um, and he was such fun, and he was so nice to be. It was it was. I mean, we had a oh, I forgot you to know, talk to we, him. I forgot we, to talk to him about the hitting the head. On oh the, God, yeah, on we had we, yeah we had quite the well. Let's look at that headline. Let's put the headline up there of what happened. Yeah, when we were on the set, when we were when we well, actually when we were oh. in Belgrade, yeah. He heard it wasn't this an on the set. It accident? wasn't an on set accident. No, well, safety is our first priority. Yes, but poor uh, John. Yeah, we had quite the drama with that. Yes, um, but it was a lot of drama on and off the set yes. in a good way. Let's play the teaser again. Actually, just remind everyone what they can get on September the seventh. The oh boy. And we also can show you, as you uh, know, we made the film Frack Nation. Gosh, yes. you talk about prescient. Let's let's play that clip from Frack Nation. James Dellingpole is a British journalist and author who has written extensively about energy issues. Shale gas is the miracle of the early 21st century. In terms of safety and environmental friendliness and economic efficiency, shale gas is about the best thing going in the world right now. And the only reason, the only reason that shale gas is is not developing faster than it is, particularly in, in Europe, I mean, America, it's already great success, is because of these disingenuous objections which are being raised 
by the environmental movement, funded, I would suspect, by, for example, the Russians, who are big producers of natural gas. I was at a dinner with Prime Minister Putin uh, recently with a group of foreign journalists and foreign academics who are invited every year. He doesn't eat very much, we all eat, ask him questions, he answers the questions. But the final question was about gas, uh, and particularly about shale gas. Um, and it was very interesting to see his reaction, um, and a real illustration, I think, of the concern that shale gas is, is causing in Russia, because it was one of the few moments in the dinner where Putin really became quite engaged, almost agitated. And he said, if you look at photographs which have been taken from a helicopter or a plane of, of where this has been done in the US, you can see the damage. And he essentially said, when people in Europe understand the implications of this, uh, of, of this technology and what it does to the environment, then they're not going to want to do it. And therefore, it's not going to be a threat to us. And they point to France, which has already banned it, and say, look, that's just the first one of many. And this is it is somewhat amusing that, that suddenly Russia finds you know, it's, it's, its conscience about the environment. At the moment, all the countries in Eastern Europe are hugely dependent on Russia. They have very few domestic resources of their own. And the European market is the absolutely crucial market for Gazprom because that's where it makes the bulk of its profit. And of course, Putin himself has very close ties with Gazprom. In fact, I would say that Russia is screwed if it can't export its gas. So it really is very important for Russia that the shale gas revolution does not happen. It is also in Russia's interest to fund those environmental groups which are committed to campaigning against fracking. That's how, how it works. I'll give you one example. Poland is currently a net importer of gas. Where does that gas come from? It comes from Russia. The problem with relying on Russia for gas is that Russia now has a, a proven history of using gas um, as um, a kind of tool, or rather blunt instrument, of uh, diplomacy. A natural gas crisis looming over Europe has taken a sharp turn for the worse. A contract dispute between Russia and Ukraine has left several cities without natural gas in the dead of winter. Without prior warning, gas supplies to some EU member states have been substantially cut. This situation is completely unacceptable. Even in the Cold War, Russia never cut off gas supplies to Europe, but under Mr. Putin, they have twice done so in recent years. So the prospect of becoming gas producers for these countries is a very attractive one indeed. You go to Poland, you hear a lot about it. In Warsaw, the huge Soviet blockhouses are a very concrete reminder of the grip Russia has had on Poland for centuries. But even though their troops are no longer on Polish soil, as the main supplier of most of the country's gas, Russia still controls the Polish people. I met up with Sabina, a pensioner who fought in World War II and survived the Cold War. Today, she spends half her pension on energy. And that money goes to Gazprom. It's like the Soviets never left. And let's, play these he let's show these headlines now from Ireland. This is happening now, not this winter. We told you that uh, the winter was going to be, you know, we're now looking at Ireland. And Ireland is one of the worst countries, but Germany's going to fall. When he said, when Phelan means worst countries, it's ill, it's Ill so ill-prepared for the coming, for the coming bad winter or even the coming good summer, by the way. So ill-prepared, but the most climate aware of them all. I think the two are connected. Yes. As, as is Germany, <laughs> yes. by the way. There is a crisis coming in Europe and it's all because of green, it's a collective a green, madness. Green madness and green they, they stupid stopped, ideas. They banned fracking, they closed nuclear power plants, they closed coal-fired power plants. 
and they closed gas fire and plants. And they decided not to frack. They decided they wouldn't yeah. frack in Ireland. They wouldn't frack in France. And they were all so proud of themselves and yes. so delighted with themselves. And, you know, according to all the experts we've spoken to in the energy, if there is a bad winter, if there is a bad winter in Europe, people will actually genuinely freeze to death. Yeah. This is not at Hundreds, all. This isn't, this isn't even slightly funny. Um, this is very, very serious. Um, and, and who's benefiting from this? Let's look at this graph. Natural gas prices in the United States at a 14 year high because they know that all of Europe is going to be scrambling desperately for gas to import it over there. It's, going to, it's just going to be a desperate scramble. Who's who's benefiting from this? Saudi Arabia. Uh, and of course, don't forget Russia because their gas, everyone wants their gas. So, exactly, exactly. You know, this is, they talk about unintended consequences. I think this is the intended consequence, you know? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, yeah. Well, Hillary Clinton did say to, say Russia was funding the anti-fracking movement. She said that in secret. To so Biden. she knew that. So she, she, actually, that. she actually even knew that. This is about 10 years ago she said that. Yeah, so... so. So it's 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 not it's a very un, we were basically we were we were right about everything, um, but we're getting no satisfaction out of it. And we're certainly getting no satisfaction at the prospect of people that we know and love who will be in yes. Europe and freezing themselves. Um, and hopefully. Yeah. And Germany, by the way, is almost the worst of the whole. They are they're in almost the worst situation of of everybody because yeah. their industry is so dependent. I think it's about one third of the energy to power the industry of Germany, the powerhouse of Europe, uh, comes from Russia, comes directly from Russia. And Russia can just decide. They'll make, they'll just decide to turn it off. Yeah. We're going to end with, we're going to end with something you spotted. Um, something, something uh, we, well, yeah, that I spotted earlier in the LA Times. I just thought this was a fabulous story and I want to kind of, I actually think it's worth reading it in full. So the LA Times have a section called LA Affairs and it's kind of like, you know, love stories or whatever, contemporary love stories. And there's all kinds of different ones and they're kind of mimicking um, a section, mo- a thing called Modern Love in the New York Times. And modern Love is pretty bad, but I have to say LA, I, re- I read these LA Affairs, they're really bad writing the Stories are not very good. I love this headline, though. LA Affairs. I went on dates with LA losers. Could an Orange County man bring me joy? And I'm like, look, you know, let's be clear what that is saying. I went on dates with lots of liberals. Could a conservative man bring me joy? And that's what she really is saying. And there. it's so fabulous. And, you know, so she starts out, so she's a divorcee. I was meeting my date at the Four Seasons Hotel in Westlake Village. It wasn't the usual online dating. But anyway, she goes on about all these people, all these guys she's met, losers. right? Losers. All these losers she's met in LA, you know, and there were, you know, and every kind, every kind of disaster happens, right? But shockingly, all these liberal men are, are pigs, basically. You know, they're basically pigs or, and they don't care and they just want sex and they just want permissiveness and uh, you know and, and then she says you know it's, and then she like so she has these disasters and she said well maybe it was me I thought but as I shared my experiences with some of my post-divorce single mom friends I learned that I was not unique these kind of encounters were widespread across the city limits of Los Angeles women were being ridiculed after refusing the offer of anyway we're not going to say that film anyway yes but lots all of- sorts of I mean basically these men were uh, were Pigs, 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 treating these women really, really badly. Yes. Um, and then, so then, go, and then, then she found this and then, and then, and then ghosting them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So then she meets Orange she, County Man, Orange County Man, which of course many of you know, as you know, is basically shorthand for conservative man. Yes. And she's, I just think the conclusion. So he, she starts dating this guy. Well, you know, as I walked to the hotel doors, I had little communication. Um, uh, he made a reservation at the hotel restaurant was sitting at a table home my rival I ordered a drink I hope you don't mind so I ordered one too you know and then uh, he, he just a- ended up being really nice really nice to her and really the date was different than the majority of my previous disasters the conversation flowed effortlessly and I was learning more about him such as how kosher meant not putting cheese on a here's, burger here's the line I really like he was a conservative Jew who was kosher a far cry from my liberal leaning Catholic upbringing but our friend thought we uh we, we would have potential. I figured it was worth a shot, despite the difference in our, in our backgrounds. I would say, I would completely rephrase that. I fig- you should have figured it was worth a shot because of the difference <laughs> in your backgrounds. So and- when, you know, so she goes on and on and on, but I love the last bit of this. I mean, this is why we, we wanted to bring this to you. Um, and as I'm currently navigating the continuation of our relationship, I know that the disaster dumpster fire dating of my past was valuable. It taught me what I don't want, but it also allowed me to know what good feels like. It showed me that there is no mile limitation, religious background, or 
political belief system that can quantify a relationship success. What truly matters is being with someone who respects you, appreciates you, and makes you feel safe, even if that means cheese will never go on a hamburger. Yes. And I think basically what she, you know, what she's not saying, what she's worked out, but what she's not saying is, huh, you know what? I don't like these liberal guys, these liberal loser guys who treat me like or like dirt basically and suddenly she's with this conservative guy from orange county and it's going swimmingly yes. and she really just hasn't put two and two together and said ha huh, this could have something to do with yes. politics by so, the way know, it showed me i listen it showed me there's no my limitation religious background or political beliefs system that can quantify a relationship success totally wrong there is right you see yes. she doesn't get it you know she's thinking oh my god i went out with this person who, who thinks differently from me and it's really weird that I, I really like it. And I'm saying maybe it's because... It's actually because. Yes. Yes. Not, it's not despite. Right, yes. It's actually it's actually because. It, the mile limitation, not, you know, going to Orange County was the best thing she ever did. But anyway, I just thought it was very good. She's being very, very honest, but yet she's not putting two and two together. For okay. a smart girl, by the way, not so smart. Yeah. But uh, good luck to her uh, on her relationship with with this guy, with this bucko. Um, I think it's I think it's great. And I mean, the, it's, what's shocking is to read about how she was treated by the other guys. Really horrible. Anyway, this we've come to the end of the show. We're, yeah. as you can tell, we're kind of a little bit breathless and excited. There's a lot going on here. Yeah. Uh, please go to mysonhunter.com and order the film right now. Um, Greg Gutfield on his show the other night basically said he's going to have a, 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 screening. a screening party. So we would recommend people do that get a copy of the film and bring friends in on on september the 7th in the evening and watch it together because by the way it's very entertaining the film is really really entertaining and i think you'll i think you'll enjoy watching it with a group um and we, we're hearing from people all over the place who say this is exactly what they're going to do so um let us know by the way let us know and obviously we've got a few weeks to go before uh launch date um but right now go to mice please thanks bye bye bye